There have been a number of thefts or robberies in North Texas recently where the victims were carrying cash from a bank or business and were followed. The latest reported case happened at a North Richland Hills strip mall this afternoon where a man was shot. He survived. So far, police have not linked any of these cases to the same criminals, but are reminding everyone to be aware of their surroundings when they leave a business or have cash. Fox Force Peyton Yeager is in North Richland Hills with the story. Peyton. Steve, and this shooting took place in the middle of the day. Multiple businesses were open nearby. One man working at a furniture store, he tells me he heard two gunshots, and then he looked out the window to see a man who was shot honking his horn for help. A single medical glove was left behind in a North Richland Hills parking lot after police say a 24-year-old man was shot during a possible robbery Monday afternoon. Investigators say the man was shot in the shoulder and the leg. The man was taken by ambulance to a nearby hospital and is expected to survive. The call near 820 and Roof Snow Drive came in as a jugging call, a term used when a thief watches a customer pull cash from a bank or ATM and then follows them after they leave to steal the money. An employee from a nearby furniture store took these photos of the scene where officers are seen helping the victim inside a silver sedan. The employee tells Fox 4 off camera he first heard two gunshots. He says then the man started blaring his horn for help as a suspect took off in another vehicle. The silver sedan was loaded up and towed away. Police did not release where the victim had just come from. However, there are multiple banks and ATMs down Roof Snow Drive. Police departments warn they see a spike in the tactic jugging with tax day approaching. In mid-March, home surveillance video caught suspects following a victim in their driveway in Watauga. The victim had just returned home from a nearby bank. Seconds later, two suspects get out of a vehicle with guns drawn and demand the cash. Police were able to arrest one suspect, but two others got away. Arlington police released this video last week asking for the public's help. A man who had just visited a Chase Bank on Pioneer Parkway was targeted. In the video, you can see a car with multiple suspects park next to the victim. A suspect breaks the back window, climbs into the car, and then takes a large sum of money from the front seat. No arrests have been reported. Back in North Richland Hills, the shooting took place in a strip mall parking lot across the street from a preschool and child care center. Officers checked for surveillance video at multiple businesses nearby, including the daycare. As for this case here in North Richland Hills, uh, the police did not provide a suspect description or a vehicle description. They also didn't say how many people they might be looking for. They released a press release around 7 p.m. this evening, but it uh, had view very few details. Steve? All right, that's Peyton Yeager tonight. Peyton, thank you. A 17-year-old is under home confinement now, facing charges in the crash that killed six family members in North Texas last year. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Texas DPS announced charges against Luke Resiker seen here in a driver's license photo for the December crash in Johnson County. Court documents say he had marijuana in his system at the time of the wreck. Fox Sports Blake Hansen is live tonight with more. Blake. Stephen Heather, of the nine people involved in this crash, six people were killed. The three who survived were seriously injured, one of whom is accused of causing that crash. Three months after a fatal head-on collision on Highway 67 near Cleburne, the first charges have been filed against one of the two drivers. 17-year-old Luke Resiker is charged with intoxication manslaughter. Investigators say he was driving the Chevy Silverado that crossed a double line and struck a Honda Odyssey van December 26th. The crash took the lives of six members of the same family, seriously injured a seventh, as well as a passenger in Resiker's truck. According to an affidavit, investigators found THC wax and a THC vape pen and marijuana inside the truck Resiker was driving. And blood results show that Resiker had THC in his system at the time of the crash. THC is the psychoactive element in marijuana. When you have intoxication manslaughter with THC listed, it's a little different from alcohol. Toby Shook is a criminal defense attorney who was not involved in the case. 
Defense attorneys often employ a strategy in intoxication by marijuana cases is to uh, put forth, well, my client's a regular user of marijuana, therefore this, these levels could be built up over time and it's not an accurate at the time he was driving. The court records also shed light on just how severe the injuries were to the three people who survived. Lokesh Potabathula was in the van and as of last month had not regained use of his lower extremities. According to documents, Resiger's passengers, 17-year-old Preston Glass, suffered severe head injuries that left him mentally impaired. Resiger himself was taken by a helicopter to a hospital. State troopers say because of his medical condition, he was unable to be booked into the Johnson County Jail and is under home confinement. He posted a $50,000 bond, which Shook says might be low for six manslaughter charges. And that may be due to the defendant's injuries. Obviously, he was very young lack of criminal history, uh, flight risk, lack of flight risk will all factor into that. We attempted to reach Resiger's family today but did not hear back. Court documents did not list his attorney. Police are looking for the shooter or shooters who killed a woman in Cedar Hill. Police have not said if they know who they're looking for specifically, but they haven't released any suspect description related to the attack early yesterday in a neighborhood. And they've only released a statement about what happened. They will not do any interviews with reporters. The victim is 45-year-old Lucretia Thomas. Others were in her home at the time with her, but they were not hurt. Fox Force Peyton Yeager is in Cedar Hill tonight with more on the murder investigation. Peyton. Steve, and we really heard the same thing from every single person who lives on that street where that home was. The barrage of bullets woke them up early Tuesday morning. Now, Cedar Hill Police, they haven't released many details in this case, and with no arrests, that's leaving people in the area on edge. It was a violent wake up call for Deborah Warren early Tuesday morning. The first thing I heard it was like one shot, boom. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. And then, but I, I didn't move. I just stayed where I was at because I didn't know exactly where it was. Wednesday, several evidence markers were left behind on the windows and the brick at a home just a few doors down from her. I knew it was close because my, be my bedroom is like right there. Around 5.30 a.m. on Tuesday, Cedar Hill Police responded to a home off Bailey Drive and found 45-year-old Lucretia Thomas inside with multiple gunshot wounds. She later died at the hospital. Thomas's family tells Fox 4 off camera they were told by police the shooter or shooters fired into the home. A neighbor across the street from Thomas tells Fox 4 also off camera there were multiple piles of shell casings left in their lawn. Cedar Hill detectives have not released if it was one shooter or multiple. Thomas's family says she lives with her three children and her grandchildren. Investigators say several other people were home at the time of the shooting. None of them were injured. Police wouldn't say why this home was targeted or who inside may have been the intended target. Witnesses reported seeing a vehicle leaving the scene, but police haven't said what type of vehicle they're looking for. I'm going to have to be praying for their family. Definitely so. Yeah. And Stephen Heather, we also noticed on that street that multiple people had surveillance cameras or ring door doorbell cameras um, on their door. So we know police went door to door looking for surveillance video, but again, no arrests in this case. Back All right. To you. Peyton Yeager, thank you. The driver of a concrete truck who struck a Central Texas school bus last week reportedly told investigators that he did cocaine the morning of the crash. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Those reports emerged soon after video was released showing the truck veering into the path of the Hayes Consolidated ISD bus. A preschooler on board the bus and the driver of a third vehicle were killed in the crash. Fox Force Blake Hansen has the latest tonight. Blake. Yeah, Stephen Heather video clearly shows that concrete truck crossing into late the lane of that school bus. The school leaders they are praising the bus driver for reacting and possibly avoiding even more loss of life. The Hay CISD school bus was bringing 44 pre-K students and 11 adults back from the Bastrop Zoo last Friday when a concrete truck veered in its path. <laughs> We 
we've muted the audio after the collision out of sensitivity to those involved. The crash killed five-year-old Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya, who was on board the bus. A 33-year-old man in a third vehicle was also killed. This week, the district superintendent praised the bus driver's reactions. She was able to take an evasive right and keep the bus from being hit squarely. And I think uh, she saved all the rest of the lives as a result of, of her, her driving ability. The video's release came just hours before multiple reports emerged that the concrete truck driver, 42-year-old Jerry Hernandez, told investigators he smoked marijuana the night before the crash, only got a few hours of sleep, and consumed cocaine in the morning before work. The crash happened around 2 in the afternoon. The driver reportedly refused a voluntary blood draw. He has not yet been charged. The bus involved in the crash did not have seat belts. In 2017, the Texas legislature passed a bill that required seat belts on any newly acquired school buses. The district says the bus involved in the Bastrop County crash was from 2011. We haven't gotten the uh, investigation report yet from DPS, and so we'll wait on that to see if seat belts would have made a different difference. But um, we are planning on accelerating our timeline to make sure that all of our buses uh, in the future will have seat belts. For now, the district says it is focused on supporting its families at Tom Green Elementary and all of the students forever impacted by the crash. It can hit home to anybody, and it, it hit here too hard, you know. It's not... It's not fair. The DPS investigation into the crash is still ongoing. It is unclear when it might make a decision on charges. McKinney police say they shot and injured a gunman during a shootout at an apartment complex. They say before officers confronted him, he had already fired his gun, threatened to kill his wife, and was suicidal. Fox 4's Amelia Jones at that apartment complex. It's on Stacy Road with the shooting investigation. Amelia. Steve, police left the scene about an hour ago. From where they were focusing their investigation, I can tell you the shootout happened right behind me. This all started as a concerned call from a family member about 31-year-old Robert Olson. They told police he was suicidal and armed with a gun. The same family member told police Olson shot around at the creek area behind the avenues at Craig Ranch apartment complex. They also told police he threatened to kill his wife and expressed a desire for suicide by cop. As Olson and the family exited the creek, McKinney police say officers were waiting for them, and that's when Olson immediately fired multiple rounds at the officers. The officers fired back and hit him multiple times. We spoke to a man who was sitting in his car waiting to pick up his daughter from the school bus when this all went down. The officer drew his gun. The other guy drew his gun. I looked to my left. He fires at the officer, and then the officer fired back, and at that point, I didn't know what to do, so I just hit the floor of my truck, and then I jumped out the passenger side. I'm just happy to be alive and nobody hurt, and I'm glad the kids weren't here. Sky 4 shows Adam's black truck next to dozens of evidence markers. We saw investigators pick up a gun that was left at the scene, along with clothing and multiple bullet casings. Police only released a statement about what happened and wouldn't do any interviews with the media or take any questions. They didn't say why Olson was at this specific apartment complex. They didn't say how many officers were involved or how many shots were fired back and forth. They never mentioned anything about body camera video, and they also never said said anything about whether officers gave Olson commands or whether there was even time for that. We do know Olson's had multiple run-ins with the law before. Court records show he's been arrested multiple times on charges of domestic violence or making a terrorist threat. He's also been arrested for DWI twice in the same year, in addition to being charged for resisting arrest. Olson was taken to the hospital and police haven't said anything about his condition. Police said no officers or anyone else in the apartment complex were hurt. The Texas Rangers are now taking over the investigation.